Hello, it's Dr. Jack Wolfson, board certified cardiologist, and thank you again for tuning in to our third installment. Tonight, uh, you know, it's it's Heart Health Month. I'm celebrating Heart Health Week. I celebrate Heart Health every single day, and I hope you're with me on this as well. And this is a very important topic tonight. The first night we did hypertension, I'm sorry, we did cholesterol. The second night we did hypertension, a natural approach. And tonight it's all gonna be about the irregular heart rhythm, irregular heartbeats and atrial fibrillation. When And atrial fibrillation is just plaguing hundreds of thousands of people. And really whether it's irregular heartbeats, PACs, PVCs, flip-flops, or it's something a little more sinister like atrial fibrillation, really the cause is the same and the cause is the cure. And that's what we are going to go over. So tonight, once again, we're gonna talk about the irregular heartbeat over there on the left, you get the best-selling book, The Paleocardiologist, The Natural Way to Heart Health. And we got a little EKG picture right there on the screen, a little rhythm strip and the, the once again, some of my credentials, I've gone through this already, you know me, I'm a board certified cardiologist, 10 years in training, and uh, then I've been in practice for, oh, but uh, 18 years since then, crazy, but that's what it is. And uh, I am at the doctorswolfson.com, and that is a picture of my beautiful family. Again, here's my Amazon best-selling book, The Paleocardiologist, The Natural Way to Heart Health, 17 chapters, 300 references, all the science is in there. You follow the information in there, your heart will be very happy, your total body will be very healthy as well. So tonight, the irregular heartbeat, by attending this presentation, you will learn palpitations and skip beats have a cause, we're gonna find them. What symptoms are serious and what symptoms are not? Let's try and discern that a little bit. The best diet about heart rhythm, how chiropractic can help your heart, lifestyle changes to help your heart, and the best supplements to reverse palpitations and heart issues. This presentation is meant for informational purposes only. The content is my opinion and my education. The presentation is not meant to diagnose, treat, prevent, uh, or cure any disease. Please speak with your healthcare provider regarding any change in your healthcare plan. Doctor, my heart is pounding, skipping, flipping, irregular, whatever it may be, um, uh, these are what the typical symptoms are. And those symptoms, uh, you know, once again, this is what people come in and they discuss, you know, with me, the heart's racing, pounding, skipping, flipping. Uh, these are what the typical symptoms are gonna be when you come in to the doctor. And um, we're gonna talk about what is causing those particular symptoms. Now, when you go to see the doctor, let's try and you know, to determine what these symptoms are. How long have you had those symptoms? Um, that tells us is the something dangerous or not. If the symptoms started a week ago, that makes it a little more significant in my mind than if they've been going on for the past, uh, you know, you know, couple of years. So we want to know what is the time frame of how long you've been having having the symptoms. There's safety in time. So the longer you go with the symptoms. Uh, I guess the the safer that you are. What makes the symptoms better? Is it by relaxing? Is it by taking a nap? Or is it when you are active, when you're doing exercising, physical activity? That's what you want to know. What makes the symptoms worse? Caffeine, sugar, stress, maybe other certain foods. And that's why I like when you have these irregular heart issues, to keep a food diary around those episodes, not a, a food diary all the time, but just around those episodes. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and your heart is racing, is it, is it, is it, you know, what, what did you have for dinner? What did you have for lunch? Trying to figure that out as well. What makes those symptoms worse? I'm um, sorry, what, you know, is it worse at night? We want to know, is it worse at night? And that also gives us some information as well. So, um, uh, is it worse with exercise? That would be something that's not good. We don't like to hear that symptoms worsen with exercise. Exercise, if they're nothing significant, if the flip flops, palpitations, if they get, they should get rid of when you exercise. Um, uh, but if they get worse with exercise, definitely that's something that should be put, you know, to the doctor's attention. 
Lightheadedness or syncope, that would be something that is kind of sinister, if you will. Uh, if you feel lightheaded, if you feel like you're going to pass out, that's something you definitely want to take to your doctor. Because if they're kind of extra beats, what's called PACs, PVCs, those extra beats that kind of just jump in there, they shouldn't bother you more than just those symptoms, racing, flip-flops, palpitations. But if it's causing you to feel lightheaded or like you're going to pass out or you actually do pass out, well, then it's something you need to take to your doctor's attention. And then the other thing, of course, is family history. And I'm not a big believer in family history, but this is a scenario where if you're 35 years old or you're 45 years old and cousin Jeff passed out while playing basketball or collapsed and died or so-and-so didn't wake up one night and he was young and nobody could figure out why, this is something that needs to be brought to a doctor's attention. Now, oftentimes people notice the symptoms more when they're laying down and especially when you're laying down on your left side because your heart kind of falls over to the left side of your chest. It's on the bed and you can feel your heart kind of pounding. Um, and it just happens that, you know, when you're when you're quiet and you're relaxed, you may notice that more. Also, when your heart slows down, when you're quiet and relaxed, that allows the extra beats to kind of jump in. And I liken that to the you know if you're if you're at the at the carnival and there's the merry-go-round if the merry-go-round is going real fast like if your heart's going real fast and you're exercising if your merry-go-round's going real fast you can't jump on if your heart's going real fast with exercise the extra beats can't jump on there but when the ride slows down you can jump on when your heart slows down especially at night those extra beats can jump in now the the possibilities are are pretty pretty lengthy as far as what this could be now it could be what's called sinus rhythm boom 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 and you feel okay doesn't really bother you or i'm sorry it um, um you're having symptoms but there's nothing really going on with your heart and so that could be stress anxiety you know and that's when we put a monitor on people and we see that their heart is actually very regular at that time. Now, another possibility is that their heart is what's called sinus tachycardia. Boom, 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 boom. Almost like you're running a marathon or, or running a sprint, but you're not. You're just watching TV. Uh, so that rhythm or that tachycardia is also most likely related to anxiety or stress. Or maybe it's caffeine. Maybe it's dehydration. Maybe it's a fever. Maybe you've got some kind of you know viral infection or something like that that can raise the heart rate. Um, the next thing is premature atrial complexes, where the top part of the heart called the atria and atrium, they send out an abnormal signal that leads to this: boom, 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 da da, boom, 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 da da. Now, typically those are benign, they're nothing significant, but they can be very symptomatic and they can bother you. Some people have a thousand of those in a day when we monitor them and have no symptoms. Some people have three of them a day and it's ruining their life. And once again, it's up to the cardiologist to figure out why. And this is not about what pharmaceutical can we use, it's about why did this happen? So kind of very similar to that is a PVC, premature ventricular complex, often called a premature ventricular contraction. But the the this is another scenario, same feeling, boom, 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 did up, boom, 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 did up. And that early beat that comes in, that is once again, something that can lead to symptoms. Um, and also typically not very dangerous at all and should not be causing any kind of lightheadedness or dizziness. But once again, each individual person, it can cause a lot of symptoms. You may be that person where you're just having a few of those, but because of those, you're bothered, you're irritated, and you're always on no. And this, once again, is an opportunity to try and figure out what's going on in your life that could be contributing to these factors. Now we get into a little more complicated things, supraventricular tachycardia, where your heart is normal and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. That is an electrical fault of the heart. Typically, that starts very quickly and also stops very quickly. 
Atrial fibrillation is certainly very common. And atrial fibrillation is more common as people get older. And that's the irregular heart rhythm. Atrial fibrillation causes two problems. Number one, it causes symptoms. Can be racing heart, lightheadedness, dizziness, even passing out episodes. And when the heart is racing that fast for a long period of time, it can also lead to congestive heart failure and cardiomyopathy. So we want to take care of that as soon as possible. Now, the other main concern with atrial fibrillation is the stroke risk. And most people don't have much of a stroke risk with atrial fibrillation, but this is where you go to the online calculator, chadsvask.org, and we can even put that into the notes as well on Facebook so you understand where you can go to chadsvask.org, and you, it's an online calculator to see what your stroke risk is on an annual basis. One of my favorite things is to lower people's stroke risk naturally. I love to get people off of the nasty pharmaceuticals and put them on a natural health plan. Now, once again, the decision is the patient's, and we discuss all those things to make sure it's the right situation for them. And it's really about identifying the risk and the benefits and the alternatives. So I'm not 100% anti-pharmaceuticals in this endeavor. Sometimes they're necessary, but let's have the discussion to say, are they necessary for you? And if there's one thing that people fly from all over the world to come see me about and to make an appointment about, it is atrial fibrillation. I'd love to see people for high blood pressure, for cholesterol issues. I see plenty of those people. But if there's one thing that really people seek out help with, it is atrial fibrillation because they're concerned about stroke. That is the main issue with atrial fibrillation. And I think, and it's been my experience, and I have a lot of patients that document it, and we have testimonials as well, that we can really help fix AFib. The number seven, ventricular tachycardia, that's an ominous diagnosis. Now, bear with me on this picture here. When to seek medical attention. When you pass out, that's certainly an opportunity to see a medical doctor and figure out what is going on. Now, why do you have atrial fibrillation? I apologize. A lot of these slides are geared towards atrial fibrillation because a lot of the data is on atrial fibrillation. But please understand that if you do have PACs, if you've got PVCs, if you're trying to stabilize your heart rhythm, really all this stuff applies. And this is where inflammation comes in. When your body is inflamed, your body is on fire, and the irritation is there, the the inflammatory markers change the heart. And when the heart is changed, that's when the electrical system is disrupted, leading to atrial fibrillation and other diagnoses like PACs and PVCs. So we've got the literature on here from the National Review on Cardiology in 2015. Many studies show inflammation is linked to atrial fibrillation. Inflammation is linked to just about everything. Now, the medical doctors know inflammation is bad. They just don't have a good idea how to put out the fire. They put out the fire with pharmaceuticals. I put it out by preventing what's causing the fire. They try and put out the fire on that gas flame that just kind of keeps going and going and going. I, I turn off the gas, turn off the fuel to that fire. Here's another slide with uh, literature from the journal Heart Rhythm about oxidative stress leading to atrial fibrillation. So when we do the most advanced testing in the world out here in Arizona, we look at all those markers of inflammation and the markers of oxidative stress to see where your heart is, to see where, where these, these markers are. And if we can quiet down inflammation and quiet down oxidative stress, we get rid of atrial fibrillation, we get rid of heart disease, we get rid of cardiomyopathy, congestive heart failure, um, we can get rid of anything because inflammation and oxidative stress is linked with cancer, dementia, heart disease. Out here, we reverse those. Now, I am the paleocardiologist, and this is my paleo pyramid, and this is how we put out the fire. We're going to start with diet, nutrition, 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 following the paleo pyramid. Tons of green leafy vegetables are all anti inflammatory meats, chicken, seafood pasture-raised eggs, avocado, coconut, olives, nuts and seeds, fruit in season, and cooking with 
with uh, animal fats, cooking with coconut oil, topping things with olive oil. You can use ghee if you want. I'm okay with, with, a, with an organic butter, preferably a raw butter on occasion. I'm okay with dairy as long as it's raw and doing it uh, maybe a little sporadically. If you don't have any problems digesting the dairy, uh, you usually, uh, you're, you're good to go. Up on the right, we've got the organ meats enjoying the foods that nature has enjoyed. We've got the spices. Spices are so anti-inflammatory, tremendous antioxidants. Uh, open up the spice drawer and just dump it into your food, into your salad dressing, on your salads and recipes. All of them are good. Oregano, thyme, cumin, turmeric. Uh, so much we did a, a blog post on our website called 10 Spices for Heart Health. And then we identified another 10 spices that are beneficial for heart health. Capers is one of my secret hacks. I love capers, little green berry, throw them into recipes, throw them into your salad dressing, into the blender, mix them up, they're great. Capers are the number one source of quercetin and quercetin is a nutrient to lower inflammation. Onions, garlic, everybody knows how powerful those are. Uh, yes, on your breath, but also as far as health uh, um, uh, consequences are concerned. And garlic, onion, they're very high in sulfur. If you remember back to the periodic table back in high school and the chart with all the atomic molecules up there, they're very high in sulfur. And sulfur makes glutathione. And glutathione is the body's main antioxidant produced by the liver, which helps combat all of that inflammation and oxidative stress. And if you're not working with a doctor that's checking serum and intracellular levels of glutathione, you're in the wrong place. You got to make sure you're making glutathione. Glutathione helps to combat brain disease, heart disease, you name it. But the most important thing out of this discussion really is over there on the left side of your screen, local, organic, grass-fed. That's what really matters. It has to be free-range, grass-fed. Everything that the doctors Wolfson eat is organic. If ice cream is your thing, go get organic ice cream. If dark chocolate's your thing, go get organic dark chocolate. If you enjoy coffee, go over to my friends at puritycoffee.com. Use the code Wolfson for a discount. You're going to get organic coffee. You're going to get coffee with no detectable mold. And then you're also going to get an amazing tasting coffee. But here's the most important thing I believe is that it is the best coffee regarding its antioxidant levels. The owner of the company sourced out the best antioxidant beans, and then everything else fell into place. It happened to be organic and non-mold, and it tastes great. Uh, so anyways, that being said, if caffeine is your issue and caffeine causes your heart to race and it causes some of these symptoms, then obviously you're going to avoid it. Our folks over at Purity, they have a decaf for you as well. Okay, so we talked about nutrition. What about sunshine for atrial fibrillation? This data is extensive. And as I've said many times from the stage, many times on podcasts, many times for whoever's listening, sunshine helps to heal everything. Get in the sun. Anybody who says avoid the sun, run from them. The sun was here before man. The sun will be here for a long time. The plants are all in the sun. The animals are all in the sun. We're the only people that sit inside all day long and think that for some reason that's possibly healthy. Big mistake. Okay. Sunshine can protect women against atrial fibrillation. The power of the sun comes into the chest into the heart and helps regulate the heart. It energizes the heart. It fuels the mitochondria of the heart. We got the literature here. More daylight equals lower risk of atrial fibrillation. People suffer less AFib in the summertime when they get more sunshine. Embrace the power of the sun. I got the reference on it uh, there. Low vitamin D is linked to atrial fibrillation. This is not about go out and take vitamin D supplements. This is about getting sunshine to crank up levels of vitamin D. Low vitamin D again equals higher risk of atrial fibrillation. Totally different study, the Journal of Clinical Cardiology in 2016. Big, big data 
here. And what they found actually that low vitamin D was linked to a 31% higher risk of atrial fibrillation. Get the sunshine. If you want to get rid of atrial fibrillation, that's what you're going to do. Now, if you're worried about stroke with atrial fibrillation or any of these heart rhythm problems, which you should, what if I told you that sunshine lowers stroke risk? It does. Sunshine lowers stroke risk. Sunshine comes into the blood vessels and it makes them work better. It increases nitro. Sunshine helps to make the blood vessels nice and slick so everything flows. Blood flows better. That's including your veins and including your artery. And that's why I tell everybody to go out into the sun naked. I'm giving you your prescription to go out into the sun naked. Um, there you go. What can I tell you? Go out in the sun naked. Our ancestors went to sleep with the sundown. They awoke with the sunrise, before the sunrise, and then they spent the day in and out of the sun, and they were naked. So here's my sunshine, sunshine prescription. Um, and on the left, I, I even signed it. That's not my signature. It's a fake signature. My handwriting is terrible. Um, do not substitute. There's no substitute for the sun. Number one, get morning, noon, and afternoon sun. Number two, get sunshine directly on your chest. Okay? Naked is naked. Sunshine directly on the chest. Number three, eat vitamin D foods, which are animal foods. So that is your organ meats. That is your seafood. That is your shellfish. That is your eggs. Dairy does contain vitamin D, raw dairy on occasion, not fortified D. That's absolute garbage. Um, uh, eat mushrooms, wild mushrooms, wild organic mushrooms are high in vitamin D2, which get, can get converted. If you need to supplement with D in this scenario, you can. And there is evidence that vitamin D supplementation may be beneficial, but don't forget your vitamin K2. Two. So you have to do vitamin K, not K1, but K2. Helps to keep the calcium in the bones and out of the arteries. So I mentioned go to sleep with the sun down and awake before the sunrise. Well, there you go. Sleep and atrial fibrillation. There's our family getting our Z's nice and relaxed and uh, co-sleeping, attachment parenting. We're so huge on that. Uh, that's a whole nother story. I don't want to digress into that. And I will because I love uh, sleeping with my family so much. It's so amazing. But sleep apnea, if you have atrial fibrillation, if you have any kind of a regular heart problem, and certainly if you're overweight, you got to get tested for sleep apnea. You got Now, what we do with the sleep apnea is a different story. Is it some big uh, face mask you're going to use? Is it an oral appliance? We'll try and find the least invasive things for you. But the best thing you're going to do is lose weight. And I think everything else that we do in our program would also be beneficial. Poor sleep quality and poor sleep duration, they're linked to a higher risk of atrial fibrillation. It's in the literature. Um so you want to make sure you're getting high quality sleep. We'll talk about that. If you have insomnia, you have a 36% higher risk of atrial fibrillation. So you can see that nutrition, sunshine, and sleep are very important. And the number of cardiologists that are talking about this with their patients is just about zero. Just about zero. Okay, sleep your way to better health. This is a phenomenal slide for you to take a picture of, for you to take a screenshot of. And don't 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 forget, we're going to load this up into YouTube. You're going to first of all it's going to live on Facebook, but we're also going to load it up into YouTube so you can watch this video up on YouTube as well. Uh, sleep your way to better health. Go to sleep with the sun down. Make your room very dark. Um, I like to uh, uh, you, we have like flashlights in the house that are red light flashlights. And those red light flashlights, maybe one of my staff can put a link on, you know, from Amazon up into the, the product that we have. It's just a little cheap flashlight that instead of like that bright light that can wake you up uh, while maybe you're going to the bathroom, whatever, it's a red light. And even if you have uh, a little night light in the bathroom or something just for safety purposes, make sure it's a red light. Keep it cool, you know, between 70 and 72 degrees, not too hot, not too cold. Zero electronics and all these people that are wearing Fitbits and all these different things and talking about how well they slept. I'm not into that. If you want to use it once a week, fine. But get the electronics off of you. Turn off the Wi-Fi. Go to the Wi-Fi unit and press bank off. We have a lot of people that even go to their circuit breaker and turn off 
the, um, the, the power to the bedroom at night. You can even have an electrician or a handyman install a timer that would turn off the power into your room in particular from uh, 8 a.m. from excuse me 8 p.m. until 5 a.m. I think that's a great great strategy. Uh, soft music, so maybe background noise. If it's loud where you're at, I love using those kind of um, uh, what's called heroes. They're like earplugs that you put into your ears to get some of the noise out of there. Maybe you're, you sleep with somebody who snores or maybe you're in an apartment where other people live or even if you're traveling in a hotel. Uh, I love organic mattresses. I love organic bedding. Get the chemicals uh, out of your life. Use that air purifier. We sell the Austin air purifier on our website. It is a phenomenal product. It's like a solid piece of steel. It's really good. Um, get rid of the alcohol. You don't need it. Caffeine. Be really careful with caffeine, especially caffeine at night. So if you want to drink a little bit of coffee in the morning, I'm cool with that. Uh, sugar. Sugar keeps you awake as well. Try and minimize the stress before you go to bed. Um, uh, you know, maybe a, a hot shower, maybe a little bit... Um, uh, you know, meditation, doing some yoga, some stretching, some deep breathing, whatever it may be can help. Um, exercise uh, early uh, and then once again, get tested for sleep apnea. But this is really just another uh, opportunity to uh, talk about, you know, once again, you have to go to sleep with the sun down because when you are awake in the artificial light, you're done. It causes brain damage. So when you're sitting there on the computer or you're staring at your phone, uh, or you're on your iPad or on your Kindle, get rid of it. Get an incandescent bulb, get a good book like mine, The Paleo Cardiologist. Read it again if you need to. And like I say in the book, if you're reading that at night, shut the book down and go to sleep. Go to sleep. Um, average time people go to sleep in the United States is midnight. It is a disaster. It leads to disease. Stop doing it. Count sheep, whatever you got to do. If you want some excellent health tips, come on over, go to uh, thedoctorswolfson.com and, and sign up for our newsletter. Excellent uh, videos, excellent uh, information, blog posts on that stuff. You want to make sure you reduce your toxic load, okay? We're getting back into the things that help to lower atrial fibrillation risk, lower PACs, PVCs, what, um, uh, PACs, PVCs. Reduce your toxic load. Get the poison out of your house, like the poison ingredients you see on the screen here. And I'm going to talk about this whole list. Uh, this gentleman here, he's smoking uh, a secondhand smoke. First of all, primary smoke. If you're a smoker, you have much higher risk of atrial fibrillation. If you're around a smoker or you lived with a smoker when you were young in a household of smokers or mom uh, smoked when you were pregnant, higher risk of atrial fibrillation. Get smokers away from you. Get away from smokers. Uh, uh, air pollution. Air pollution is a massive problem. I've talked about this before. Air pollution is linked to a higher risk of everything in the literature, including atrial fibrillation. So get rid of the air pollution. Traffic noise is a risk factor for, for uh, atrial fibrillation. Traffic noise, uh, uh, air pollution, all this stuff can be linked to atrial fibrillation. Television, like I said, sitting on the couch, watching the blue light, uh, stressing yourself out, with the news of the day, the trauma of the day, whatever crime scene TV show, whatever you're into. Um, if you have atrial fibrillation, if you have irregular heart problems, this is the sacrifices you got to make. So you got to think, is that TV show worth it? Is watching out, is all that worth, worth it? Okay, so your lifestyle detox plan, natural laundry products, natural personal care products, skin lotions, shampoos, colognes, perfumes, deodorant. Everything you bring into your house, is it natural or not? If not, don't bring it in. Get that Austin Air Purifier off our website. Natural kitchen products, the soaps, how you clean the kitchen. Everything has to be natural. Just cheap white vinegar is absolutely perfect. Natural, um, uh, the whole natural household uh, is what you're going to do. Carpeting, flooring, mattresses, paints, everything. Think about everything. And once again, reduce the tech. Reduce the tech uh, in your life. Chiropractic care. I'm a, obviously a monster fan of chiropractic care because it works. And as you can see on these slides here, 
that the brain is connected to the heart and the heart is connected to the brain through the autonomic nervous system. And if the autonomic nervous system is dysfunctional because of a spinal problem, which just about everybody has, you need to see your doctor of chiropractic and get adjusted. Everybody in my practice who has heart rhythm problems, they have to be under the care of a chiropractor. If you're interested in coming out to see me and you don't wanna see a chiropractor, don't come see me because we're not going to work together. Go see some other holistic cardiologist. Good luck with that. If you want to see the best, if you want the best, you're going to come out to Arizona and you're going to be under chiropractic care. That's just the way it goes. Okay. Um, if you want some amazing information, come on over and check out the healthyheartshow.com. That's where you're going to get um, uh, access to my, my podcast. And on the podcast, which also goes to YouTube videos, by the way, but the podcast is amazing. I've, I've interviewed some of the most fantastic people in the health and wellness space. And, uh, and, and once again, sometimes we don't even address heart issues specifically on the Healthy Heart Show, as strange as that sounds. But if you're talking to someone that's talking about breath work, if you're talking to someone about chiropractic, if you're talking to someone about detox, Oxification. All that stuff helps the heart, and it all helps get rid of atrial fibrillation, PACs, PVCs, you name it. All right, let me get into some evidence-based supplements here. Evidence-based supplements supplement the healthy lifestyle. Supplements from a quality company that you can trust, that gets the results that the Wolfsons do, that's who you're going to uh, uh, deal with. Now, from the journal 2018, in, in 2018, what these authors are really saying is that we're going to get rid of atrial fibrillation and heart rhythm disorders by cranking up the mitochondrial function. The mitochondria are the fuel factories of the cells. And if the fuel, if the cells have enough fuel, then it's going to get the job done. It's going to lower inflammation, lower oxidative stress, and lower the risk of atrial fibrillation. So an excellent mitochondrial booster is CoQ10. And this is from the journal in 2015, the Journal of Investigative Medicine. CoQ10 reduced AFib from 22% to 6%. That's huge. In over 100 patients that they looked at, this was a tremendous, tremendous drop. Statin drugs do not do this in any way, shape, or perform to people. Blood pressure drugs aren't even close. Aspirin is a joke. This markedly reduced the risk of atrial fibrillation in this group. CoQ10, low, low potassium, high risk of atrial fibrillation. Out here in Arizona, we do the most in-depth testing in the world. We test for levels of intracellular potassium. Come out and see me or find a doctor who's testing intracellular levels of potassium. And then you're going to crank up your potassium intake through food, avocado, for example, are wonderful in potassium, not bananas, that's garbage, but avocados would be a great source of potassium. Low potassium, higher risk of AFib. Get tested, get rid of the AFib, and, and that includes PACs and PVCs. I always go after potassium people, not serum, not blood, intracellular, that's what really matters. Now, low magnesium, higher risk of atrial fibrillation. And would you believe I'm telling you, two thirds of the people that I see for atrial fibrillation that of course have seen other medical doctors, they never even checked a magnesium. They never checked a serum or a blood magnesium, let alone an intracellular magnesium. That's malpractice. That's a problem. You have to have your intracellular magnesium levels checked and then we crank them up. Avocado, another great source of magnesium. Vitamin C reduces post-operative atrial fibrillation risk. I'm a big fan of vitamin C, big fan of eating citrus, especially in the winter time. And this post here shows vitamin C and omega-3s, along with vitamin E, lowered AFib risk from 32% to 10%. And this is in the journal. Maybe you've never heard of it. The Journal of the American College of Cardiology, the biggest cardiology journal in the world. And you know how many cardiologists care about this data? Just about zero. So that's why I love eating seafood. I love testing omega-3 levels in people. And I love putting them on omega-3 supplements on top of the seafood intake. Wild salmon, sardines, anchovies, shellfish. So there you go there. Um, what else here? Uh, 
Uh, elimination of cardiac uh, heart uh, rhythm issues with uh, with uh, taurine and L-arginine. That's why we put this stuff into my product called Vessel Support. So speaking of the products regimen here, the summary of the supplements protocol and the dosing for heart rhythm. We've got some of our basics there. Basics are multivitamin, the fish oil, and the cardiobiotic, which is our amazing uh, probiotic. But here's here's the stuff that we really use in the bottom uh, for for heart rhythm issues. Uh, in addition to some of the basics. So here's what we got. We got the heartbeat, which is the heartbeat bottle. Always anything that raises nitric oxide is going to lower atrial fibrillation and heart rhythm problem, PACs, PVCs risk. So we got the heartbeat, the L-arginine, citrulline, taurine combo called Vessel Support. We're going to load you up with magnesium. We're going to load you up with, with potassium, and we're going to load you up with as our cardio cue, which is the ubiquinol active version. So what you do is you can head on over to our shop page and you can search Calm My Heart. My staff right now, they're putting the links into the show notes and into the, the comment section on Facebook call, uh, to, to show you the links of where you can click into there. When you purchase this, you get a 20% discount and we're going to give you free shipping on this package because we want to make you better. We want to get rid of this issue. Is to get people off of pharmaceuticals. I have a lot of missions, as you know, but one of the things I love to do is get people off pharmaceuticals, find the cause, and fix it. PACs, PVCs, heart racing, heart palpitations, atrial fibrillation. This is your plan. So, atrial fibrillation, I'd love for you to come out to Arizona and come see me. I know it's a distance, but you're worth it. You're worth it. How many of you out there, raise your hands, want to get rid of atrial fibrillation, want to get rid of the PACs and PVCs and all these extra heartbeats? Go ahead and raise your hand. I can't tell if you're raising your hand or not, but if you are, kudos to you. This is the plan. Um, lead that healthy lifestyle. Eat the right foods. Get the sunshine. Get the sleep. Get rid of the chemicals. Go see the chiropractor, get rid of the stress, get tested, and get on evidence-based supplements. So I'm going to um, stop my uh, uh, screen share, and we are on right now. We've got uh, a lot, a lot of people here. And, uh, let me just go through some of the commentary, uh, uh, if you will. Somebody asked about taking omega-3s if you're on a blood thinner. Uh, uh, to me, the answer is clearly yes. Uh, did the doctors tell you, they tell you to stop taking omega-3? Did they stop telling you to eat fish, which contains the omega-3? To me, there is no reason to stop fish oil or eating fish if you're on a blood thinner, okay? Um, uh, what else? Um, uh, does working out, working out, uh, ex physical activity tends to make everything better. Unless, of course, your symptoms get worse with physical activity. If that's the case, go talk to your medical doctor. If you have PVCs and you don't know what's causing it, once again, I just told you what's causing it. It's sleep. It's lack of sunshine. It's not eating the right foods. It's environmental toxins, pollutants. You know, your heart is an electrical organ. Do you think if you're sitting with your cell phone on top of your heart that that's possibly impacting the electrical system of your heart? Of course it is. David Hodges, thank you so much for your commentary. Uh, Ubiquinol is the right product you want to take. Um, uh, can people taking ARBs for high blood pressure safely take extra potassium? You want to get that checked uh, by your doctor and, and make sure. Uh, this presentation will be live afterwards. Um, uh, it will not live afterwards, but it'll be available uh, living on Facebook and also on, on YouTube. Shellfish, uh, oysters, um, uh, clams, mussels, especially when they're wild, uh, they're fantastic. If you're a vegetarian, I don't recommend uh, vegetarianism, so I'm going to end it with that. Vegetarians have to eat seafood. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, Lane Kinney in the house, shellfish, oysters. Go get oysters and enjoy them. Okay. Um, um, uh, somebody said my cardiologist laughed at me when I mentioned CoQ10 and magnesium. Show your cardiologist this presentation. Show them the studies that I just said. What, what are you going to argue with? The literature? Are you going to argue with common sense? Organic avocados. Um, uh, uh, my staff is commenting avocardio. Totally, totally, totally. Um, 
is so important. I love it. Thank you, Karen Johnson, for for you know being a testimonial. So many of my patients are on this uh, webinar, and of course, and they're on this webinar because they love the stuff um, uh, you know that I say. Uh, thank you so much for all these great comments. Uh, indoor plants are fantastic. See the indoor uh, that is courtesy of my wife who wants to keep me uh, nice and healthy. Um, comments about how much they love Donald Trump. Uh, and I don't know if Donald Trump helps uh, with uh, heart rhythm disorders, but if it's helping you, great. Somebody else says Trump causes atrial fibrillation the dialogue that gets political. Let's leave it at that. Barbara Ann Roberts read The Paleo Cardiologist. Um, my book is available on Amazon, Amazon bestseller. But you know what? Amazon has enough money. Amazon's doing pretty well. Come on over to our website, support the Doctors Wolfs, and get a copy of my book over there. Uh, what else? Uh, you know, really, uh, this is all fantastic stuff. My staff is commenting. Uh, if you take Coumadin, there's no reason to take vitamin K. Uh, no reason at all. That's why we try and get people off of Coumadin. Uh, um, what else? Um, sunshine naked. We are negative 36 degrees. Okay, fi finally, I'll leave it at this, and then I'm, I'm going to hop off and do some other work. Uh, but what I do want to say is this, is that if it's cold outside, bundle up. I get it. I came from Chicago. Bundle up, but get your face in the sun. Even if it's cloudy, get your face outside, your eyeballs outside, and let the energy from the sun and from light come into your eyes, to the back of the eye called the retina, to the back of the brain, melatonin. And when you have melatonin, it lowers inflammation. And when you lower inflammation, you get rid of heart rhythm issues. So if you're on the East Coast, it's 710 right now. Go get ready for bed. Thank you so much for this presentation. Don't forget tomorrow, final one of the week. I know it's Valentine's Day. I hope you're celebrating with your Valentine as I will be my beautiful bride, Dr. Heather, and my family, and my children, uh, and my dog, Sal. Um, tune in tomorrow night, same time, and we're going to talk about leaky gut, leaky heart, leaky brain, and you're going to get some fantastic information. If you like this information, certainly share it with a friend. You know, atrial fibrillation is a major problem. People are really, really affected by PACs and PVCs. Make sure that you share this information as well. Thank you again, Dr. Jack Wolfson, the paleocardiologist of the Doctors Wolfson.